Good morning. Good morning. You know, this is Arizona, and I can't tell if it's going to be warm or cold when I come out for the first time in the morning. Obedience and salvation. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 13, it says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his pleasure. At all of our homes, we expect good manners and high expectations of obedience from our children. Isn't that correct, parents? I obey right away is a common phrase that we hope to hear from them. Children should obey their parents because it is the right thing to do as it pleases the Lord. Sometimes as adults, however, we seem to think that we are off the hook of the I obey right away mentality. But as a child of God, this expectation is still in place throughout our whole lives. Obedience can often seem like a chore or even a burden, but it is truly the mark of a mature Christian. Your growth into mature, Christocentric Christians relies greatly on your commitment to think, worship, and work doing the right things. God wants us to learn how to obey him. But we must remember that obedience is the fruit of salvation, not the root of salvation. This process of continuing to grow in Christ and walk in obedience is called sanctification. It is the Lord who is doing the work in us, even though we are partnering with God thus becoming transformed to look more like Christ. However, some, some among us know for sure that we have put off or procrastinated on the call of God in our life. Who among us here, whether we're 13 years old or 93 years old, thinks to himself, Surely God isn't calling me to go down this path or that path because I'm either too young or I'm too old. I have things to accomplish first or used to be a salesman, but I can no longer speak in front of crowds anymore. Too old, too young. Today, Jonah, a minor prophet of God, was called to service by God. Go to Nineveh and prophesy. Go to Nineveh and prophesy, he said to Jonah. However, on this occasion, Jonah decided to willingly defy God's express will for his life by sailing to a city opposite of where God told him to go. When Jonah was called for his mission, the Lord's desire was for him to say, Yes, Lord and to leave immediately in response. For those of us whose lives are perhaps less than perfect or are racked with difficulties every day, no matter how difficult it is, does it ever occur to you that God may have placed you exactly where you can best serve him and that where you are is not by happenstance? The Lord uses us, mankind, in many ways that are not obvious to us to help carry out his will in this earth age. Whether it is where we work, where we live, and of course for those of you who are golfers, where you golf, where you travel, or where you vacation, God is sovereign in our life. I'd like to share with you a very brief example of of uh, just in my life, 
where God has shown himself sovereign in a less than expected place. I was on a cruise ship. Um, and on the second day, I believe, I went down and exercised and went in my exercise clothes to the uh, breakfast up on the Lido deck and got a nice plate of food and I had my uh, divine office or my, my breviary with me, which looks like a Bible, and I sat down to eat by myself, perfectly prepared to have a peaceful, non-disturbing moment. <laughs> a man passed by, a Jewish man. He took one look at me and he says, can I sit here with you? And I said, well, um, sure, sir, sure. So he sat down with me, and lo and behold, uh, I learned many things about him at that short meeting. And for the other 10 days on the cruise, he was my buddy. <laughs> but what I learned on day one was that uh, he had gotten a diagnosis of cancer a couple of days before the cruise. So he left his wife and family, got on a cruise by himself to come and contemplate what was going to be his future. He asked me about this Bible that was next to me, and I explained to him that it wasn't a Bible, but it was, uh, it was the divine office. And I explained it to him a little bit and talked to him about Scripture. Keep in mind he's Jewish. You never know what God can do. We became friends and have kept in contact from that day to this one by phone. However... He has since converted to the Christian faith, been baptized, and is now a prolific proclaimer of the love of God and Jesus Christ. This is a tremendous thing, but you never know, like me on the ship, like Jonah, you never know what God is going to put in front of you. When the Lord calls you to mission, no matter what or when, you must be willing to do that. As the Apostle Paul tells us today, that must be God's call. It may require us to detach from things of this world, relationships, emotions, possessions, occupations, and other distractions. Consider this, however, when you hear God's call, and a decision has to be made whether to follow the path chosen by God or to turn away, like Jonah. Consider this. There is a certain divine appointment with God towards which we are all heading that we call death and judgment. Let our decision always be informed by this reality, not out of fear only, but out of love and trust in God's call upon your life. All of the three scriptures for today, for this weekend, they have a connection, which is heeding the call of God in our life, in whatever form it may take, and then listening to God and being willing to follow his directions. This should and must take priority over all other considerations. The first of the Ten Commandments given to Moses way back at Mount Sinai means, according to the church's teachings, followers must worship and adore God alone because God is alone. It prohibits us from putting anything, and I say anything above him. Obedience means nothing in our life must prevent us from following God's call, not our power, our pleasure, our race, our ancestry, financial status, and especially, especially our own plans. God's plans will often differ from ours. All sin, all sin serves some other God. It obeys another commander. If God really is your beloved, then you will be obedient to his will and do what he wishes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. 
Jesus calls the first of his disciples in today's gospel. These disciples left everything to follow Jesus. They followed after him. They became his disciples. They were transformed into a new reality and would become what? Fishers of men. The manner in which Jesus calls his disciples were radical. It wasn't timid. Normally in that day, a student sought the teacher and followed him only as long as it took to attain rabbinic status himself. The call of Jesus, however, is absolute, disrupting the lives of these men, promising only a school of training that has no graduation date, an uncompromising invitation to break with business as usual. The world, as these disciples knew it, was coming to an end. Are you ready to answer yes to a radical call of Jesus for your life? The fishing industry of antiquity at the time of these disciples was comprised of mostly middle-class men. They were not poverty-stricken necessarily and were likely the middle class of Jesus' day. When Jesus asked the disciples to leave everything to follow him, he was asking them to abandon their entire economic and social life. In today's gospel, Mark teaches us that discipleship demands a response, a response made from our own free will. There was nothing extraordinary about these men, just as some of us may say about ourselves. They were not particularly brilliant. They had no master's or doctorate degrees. They were not necessarily even moral giants, but were ordinary people. We are mostly ordinary people. They didn't merit Jesus' choice of them, nor do we accept it or reject it. It is the same choice faced by every potential disciple throughout the ages. In the, par in the Catechism, paragraph 615, it says, For as by one man's disobedience many were sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. In the spirit of discipleship today, I ask you to close your eyes, bow your heads as I pray to the Father that we might be made disciples of men. O oh, Heavenly Father, I must admit that I struggle to obey you immediately. I know that delayed obedience like Jonah is still disobedience. You command children to obey their parents and for us as your children to obey you. I long to work out my salvation with fear and trembling in you because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I want to make wise decisions that honor and please you above all. I need your grace and spirit to empower me to obey so I rest in you and trust you are working in my regenerated heart. Please give me a hunger for your word so that my mind can be renewed to be able to say no to the world and flesh and yes to you. Thank you, Lord, in advance for finishing the work you have begun in me. And with that, we ask St. Gerard, who showed perfect obedience to God's will over his own will, our Blessed Mother, who said yes and was obedient to God and all the angels and saints to pray for us to the Lord our God. Amen, amen. and amen.